and welcome to this series on um, learning technologies. My name is Juliet Denny and today we are going to be talking about gaming mechanics. So gaming mechanics um, was defined by uh, a British video um, producer called Nick Pelling and that was way back in 2002 and since then there's been a lot of development in the industry um, and a lot of confusion as to exactly what gaming mechanics is. Um, Gartner, who some of you may know, a well-known research agency, their definition of gaming mechanics is the use of gaming mechanics and experience design to digitally engage and motivate people to achieve their goals. So obviously a really, really great way of making learning more interesting is using gaming mechanics, hence the video today. So what we do at Growth Engineering is we use these gaming mechanics and we use numbers of different gaming mechanics to see if we can drive more and more learner engagement because we want people to love their learning. Um, so one of the first and most basic, basic gaming mechanics is badges, right? You can do this in the real world, it doesn't have to be online, and there are different types of badges. So you've got badges for doing something little, you might have badges for doing something social, you might have badges for doing a big piece of curricula, um, you know, finishing a whole exam, and you, we call those uh, certification badges. You also might have achievement badges. So there was a, a, a guy who basically termed, a guy called Ralph Costa, who ter termed the, the phrase the mountain mastery. And that was really all about getting achievement badges for doing something you don't necessarily like. Okay, so imagine first thing you do is you log onto a platform or you go into a classroom and you get a badge for introducing yourself. Okay, so the idea of these badges is it gives you a warm and fuzzy feeling and it gives you a sense of confidence before you take on something you might not necessarily uh, want to do. Okay, so when we think about badges, we can define them in certification badges, uh, badges, badges, achievement badges. <laughs> there are lots of different types of badges, um, but obviously that's a key, key mechanic there. Um, the next thing is experience points. Okay, so not all actions in learning or in life indeed are born equal. So that's why we have the notion of XP. So experience points is the harder something is to do, the more XP you should get. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to encourage people to come onto the platform or start the learning experience and we might give them one XP for changing their profile photo, or one XP for doing something on the social stream. But as things get harder, like they've got an exam or they need to, you know, deliver a sales presentation or they need to prepare, um, you know, a sales plan or whatever it might be, the XP would be higher. So you get the same virtual badge, you could get a gold badge, but it would be worth different XP. So XP is a very, very important part of gamification. Um, the next thing that we've got is leaderboards, right? So there's no point having uh, one of the key bits of gamification is obviously leaderboards. You need to be able to compare your progress towards other people, right? So a critical part of badges and XP is seeing how you rank and how you're rated between the other learners, okay? So leaderboards are absolutely critical and they're not always negative. They can drive a lot of participation and especially when people can see visually, let's say in a classroom or indeed, you know, on a platform, they can see how other people are comparing and how fast the velocity that they're moving up and down that leaderboard. That can really, really get them engaged. Um, the next thing that we've got is levels, okay? So we know from learning that everybody likes to see progression. Everybody likes to know in their life they are progressing, okay? Educationally, spiritually, morally, whatever it might be, progression is an important part of the human state, okay? So how we use levels is to determine where people are. So when they're coming into a platform or a learning experience, we would say, right, you're on level one or you're on level novice, then you're going up to, all the way up to level experience. And the key thing about um, levels is understanding where you are in the journey, yeah? Learning is a lifetime thing. It's something we all need to be doing on a regular basis. The critical thing with levels is we know what the journey looks like, right? So when you start out the beginning of the academic year or you start out in the beginning of, you know, a, a new sales development program, you wanna know where you start, what the middle looks like, and where the end is. And you want to be able to compare your progress to the people around you, yeah? So that's where levels is really, really important. Um, and then, 
I've just touched on the real basics of gaming mechanics, okay? So there's a lot of flack in the industry about, oh, has it got a badge, has it got XP, has it got levels? But there is so much more gaming mechanics that, you know, any decent platform or, or any you, you can use to basically increase the amount of engagement you're getting. So there's a couple here that I just want to touch on. First one is streaks, okay? So if you guys have used Duolingo, if you've used anything, even Snapchat, right? You can see how long you've done it. And one thing we know about learning something is, is that learning and knowledge doesn't become behavior unless we do it every day, okay? Because the forgetting curve kicks in and we forget everything in, you know, seven to nine days. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we use streaks and we're monitoring those streaks so we're building a habit of learning. And that's how we turn knowledge into behavior yeah so streaks are really really important it's a visual reminder that we need to go back and we need to start learning a little amount every single day the next thing is scorecards right so everybody as, a, as I was talking about before needs to have a clear idea of where they are in their journey now how are we gonna do that if we don't have report cards, yeah? So what a scorecard is, is just a simple reminder where you can take your scorecard and you can take your friend's scorecard you can put them together and you can you know, see who's doing better, right? So scorecards are a really, really visual way. And again, it doesn't have to be online. It can be, you know, in, in the real world. The next thing that we're using a lot of is peer-to-peer -peer battles, okay? Nobody likes to be tested, do they? Like, I don't like to be tested by a teacher. You don't like to be tested by somebody who's kind of, you know, the learning development department. But we're okay with quizzing each other. I'm okay with saying, hey, Mary, my best mate in the office, why don't I choose to battle you? And that's really what you're reframing the conversation in terms of the quiz questions. And you're writing the battle pool, and they could be on physical cards, or they could be, you know, in our case, on our platform or one of our apps. And you are inviting a friend to battle. It's the same thing as being tested by a teacher. It just feels a lot better, right? So battles. The final one I just want to talk about is challenges. So uh, what we know about learning is, is that learning um, does not translate into behavior or um, unknown knowledge, right? So what we want is when we're teaching people, let's say math or algebra or geography or um, information security, we want it to become um, knowledge that is known, but you don't need to think about it, okay? And one of the ways of doing that is to get people to practically describe what they are actually using the knowledge for. And we've, there's another video on this, talks about, about Bloom's taxonomy, which is exactly this. But the thing about challenges is it gets you to apply your knowledge about that particular subject area. And by doing that, by ap applying that, and then getting your, you know, your teacher or your learning technology department or your manager or whoever it might be to mark and assess the way that you've addressed the app, that application of knowledge, you're then beginning to own that knowledge. And that's what challenges are. So another really, really good way of moving that knowledge into behavior. So those are just some. Um, now, it's really important to understand why, so what, right? Why is everyone so crazy about gaming mechanics and why do they work? I think intuitively we all know we like to play games, right? Whether it's tic-tac-toe, whether it's, you know, chess, whether it's, you know, uh, whatever it is online or the latest app. The bottom line is, is we know that games are fun, okay? And the reason games and gaming mechanics are fun is for the following reasons, right? Your brain goes crazy, your brain likes it, right? So what happens is, as soon as you're in a state of fun, a state of joy, right? What happens is you will raise your dopamine levels. So you're gonna feel better. You're gonna feel more excited about learning, okay? And that is the state we want you in when you start learning. The other thing we're gonna do is your brain is gonna start releasing endorphins. So you're not gonna be stressed. You're not gonna be worrying about the shopping, what you're gonna do, you know, Mary's doing after school or whatever it might be. Your endorphins are racing. Again, feel good factor. And then the other thing that you're gonna do is because you're in this great state, your cortisol levels or your stress about learning something new are going to go down. So what this means is gaming mechanics works at a level that is going to bring the joy back into learning. And that's really what we want. We want people to love learning because we're born curious, right? So why can't we get back into a groove where people are absolutely loving their learning? And this is where gaming mechanics comes in. So use it, folks. And that from me is it. Thank you. Hi guys, my name's Juliet Denny and um, I'm from a company called Growth Engineering. I hope that you enjoy these videos. I hope you give it a big thumbs up. Um, I also hope that you comment and you give us some questions because otherwise, how am I going to know what you want to 
learn about in future. So I want your comments and I want your feedback. And then most importantly, it would be really great if you could subscribe to the channel and then when I'm delivering out new content and hopefully I'm asking, uh, answering questions that you guys have asked me, you'll know when I post another video. So thank you very much. And thank you for being part of my learning tribe.